YB stays on your neck. <laughs> Yo, my dance. Make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and obviously hit the bell for notifications. So as we've all heard by now, Anthony Joshua, Eddie Earnhorn, and the rest of the team AJ have confirmed now the fight will be taking place in Saudi Arabia by way of Riyadh, I believe it's called. <laughs> I called it Riyadh before, but it's Riyadh. Um, and the reason I'm doing this video is just kind of to confirm the fight will be in Saudi Arabia because obviously when your boy the YB broke the exclusive only on YouTube news, it wasn't actually confirmed by Team AJ. And actually, but more... The focus of this video won't really be to be on that. It'll be more to do with the backlash that's kicked off on Twitter, on social media since this news broke. And to be honest, when I when I first did my reaction video, I was in a mad hype. I wasn't really thinking about the the political implications and whatnot because me personally, I tend to maybe naively so, but I tend to separate all of the institutions. So let me. Before I, so let me stop there and go on. Let me explain what people have been saying. So, as you can see on your screen now, many people have been coming at Team AJ sideways, talking about ah, oh, AJ, AJ and Hearn have let us down. They're supporting Saudi Arabia's human rights violations, and his, they're supporting Saudi Arabia's unholy war in Yemen and whatnot, and. I can see that point of view, however, you've got to make sure you're consistent. Now, let me get my point of view straight. I think all war is abhorrent. Personally speaking, all the wars I see going around the place over the last 30, 40, 100 years, I think the leaders should be the ones doing the fighting, if I'm honest. They seem to be the ones that are so easy to pull the trigger all the time. Tony Blair, back in 2000, he should have been the one over in Iraq and Afghanistan fighting. Not everyone else's son and daughter. Because you'll notice, all these great leaders who say, who make all these big-ass decisions, they're the, you never see their kids doing the fighting. It's always everyone else's children. But my point is, all war is abhorrent. And you've got to make sure you're consistent. So whilst I completely agree, Saudi Arabia being involved in Yemen is disgusting. But that said, should that stop a sporting event going there? For example, many of the people who are knocking Saudi Arabia would be happy for the event to take place in the UK. Now, you've got to ask yourself, wait there, so you're saying the event shouldn't happen in Saudi because Saudi have been unholily attacking Yemen, but why, why should it be in the UK? We've been involved in Iraq, we've been killing... We've been killing millions of innocent people in Iraq and Afghanistan for the last 20 years. So, if you're going to get all political about it, let's be consistent. That means it shouldn't be in America either. Because America, in fact, never mind just them. UK, over the last 20 years, America and UK, Libya, Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan. And I'm sure there's many more places, but not everyone, that seems to be fine. You've got to be consistent with it. Don't be coming at Saudi Arabia sideways. <coughs> and like I say... All of it is disgusting, but at the end of the day, you can't knock one place and then just because it's your homeland, just because the UK have decided that, oh, it's okay for us to be in Iraq and Afghanistan and Libya and Syria. If that's, if that's okay for us to do, then you shouldn't, you, you can either, you should either outlaw all of it. It's, it's either all morally disgusting or it's not. You can't pick and choose. And another thing on that note. In my opinion, people should be more like flag bearers, country bearers. And I've been disappointed over this time with Naz. Because Naz, when the fight, I think it was Groves versus Smith in the, the World Boxing Super Series final. That, that, took place in some, that, took, that took place in somewhere in the UAE. I can't remember where it was. But essentially, Naz, who is a Yemeni himself, he turned up there and was shaking hands and was licking, grinning teeth and whatnot, so with that respect, while AJ's a Nigerian, now I understand he could have taken, well then, like I keep explaining, I was about to say, he could have taken a moral stance and said, no, I'm not going there, but like I said, he went to America and the UK and they're doing, in my opinion, worse things than Saudi Arabia have done, in that sense, yeah, that's for, that's for sure, because whatever Saudi Arabia has done in Yemen, ain't nothing compared to what's happened in Iraq and Afghanistan and Syria and Libya, 
So, in that respect, I struggle to see, if anything, in terms of global warmongering, it's actually worse. <laughs> AJ is actually morally better off in Saudi Arabia than he is the UK. In in reality, if you look at the actual, if you look at the actual statistics, he's better off in the UK. I mean, sorry, in Saudi Arabia. In terms of lives taken, innocent lives taken, the UK and US has much more blood in its hands than the Saudi Arabia does. That's the bottom line. So people need to rein in all that, all that, all that, that, that all that, that new age. Oh yes, oh it's a, it's an atrocity to go to Saudi Arabia. Oh they've got human rights violations. So is everyone. At the end of the day, and it's easy for a lot of people to, to point the finger at others rather than looking at themselves. If people spent more time, if all these dons on social media spent more time looking at what we was doing in the UK, there might be a lot. There might be a lot more happiness in the world rather than everyone look. Oh, look at them! Look at the Saudis! Look at yourself! Ultimately, anyway, that's that part done. And of course, like I say, ideally, AJ should go to somewhere ultra neutral. But that means he can't go to the US, the UK, or Saudi. He'd have to go somewhere like, I don't know, um, pick, pick, pick somewhere that hasn't been involved, involved, sorry, in any military exercises over the last 30 years. That's where he'd have to go. And you'd, you'd be pretty hard, hard stretched to find somewhere. Now, that's that part done. The other part, people of, a lot of UK fans have been saying, as you can see on your screen now, they've been complaining that, um, how are gay and lesbian and LGBTQ supporters of Anthony Joshua going to go to Saudi because of obviously the laws over there? And I'm not sure, I'm not, like I say, I'm not a specialist on Muslim laws or whatever. I'm not a specialist in that business, but from where I'm sitting, to an extent, they've got a, they've got a fair point in that, right? They've got a fair point because my issue is, Whilst I believe AJ's his own man, he, he can do as he pleases, and as I've mentioned a second ago, lots of there's lots of fuckery that's gone on in the world, and people haven't said much about it. So in that respect, I don't really I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold it all on AJ to carry that flag. Does that make sense? Yeah, the bottom line is there's a lot of injustice that's carried on in the world, and people ain't said squat about it. So what am I meant to sit here and expect AJ to take bread out of his children's and his family's mouth? For for other people, in that sense, I'm I don't, I don't think that he should. If he if he doesn't feel if he doesn't want to be that guy, then he doesn't have, he shouldn't have to be that guy. There's plenty of other people who could have stepped up by now who chose not to. So with that in mind, on the other hand, though, I see their side because many of these people in the LGBT community and otherwise. There's a lot of people who, who are scared about going to Saudi because of, I'm not sure, I'm just, I'm just speculating on, on the things I've read. Apparently you can't drink there and you can't, um, apparently people have been arrested for doing things like kissing in public and whatnot. And I understand that, that's the way their laws are, but UK fans are arguing that we're the ones that have supported this guy. We've made AJ into the, what he is essentially. We've backed him, we've, we've, we've lined his pockets with pay-per-views and actually going to the, the events. And a lot of people who travel to the US, a lot of people, cause I, me personally, I don't travel. So wherever this fight was, it don't make a lick of difference to me. I'm not, I'm not a stakeholder, I've never really put any money in AJ's pocket. But there's other dons out there who have bought every pay-per-view, who have travelled to the US and travelled to um, Cardiff and London, paid big money. And they they feel a bit left out, and I actually completely agree with that. To it, I actually completely agree. I have to admit, them people they have been marginalised in this situation because, but on the very bottom line is without them, without them loyal dons, yeah, not me, the people who actually went out of their way to go there. Without them, he wouldn't be where he is today, and I think he could have possibly thought a bit harder about that. But as it happens, it, people, <laughs> life will life will go on, and like I say. AJ's going to lick this guy down, and it's only one fight. I understand that it's a big one, and people, many people would have liked it in the UK, but you've got to remember, like I've been explaining to everyone, and it's funny actually, like, this is one thing I did say yesterday, I said to everyone, do not take this out on AJ, the fact that it's gone to Saudi, because he had to pick somewhere neutral. Now I guess there's many people who could say, oh well, he could have gone to many places neutral. And that's true, that's also true, but... 
if you want to blame anyone, blame Ruiz. Because let's get it right. AJ said himself, we want it in the UK. Earn Hearn said himself, we want it in the UK. And, let, and to be honest, <laughs> I've been telling you like, what's been going. People haven't wanted to listen. People haven't wanted to listen to the YB's exclusive sources. But I've been telling you what's going on. Let's get it straight. People are saying now, oh, well, Eddie Hearn and AJ... They were lying. They didn't really want it in the UK. They were just they were just trying to make out they wanted they were just trying to make out they was they were supporting the UK fans. But they were planning this all along. Not true. And I'll tell you the proof. Look at Eddie Hearn's social media on the twenty sorry on the seventh of or yeah, look at Eddie Hearn's media social media on the seventh, I believe, of July. That was the first time he posted new news coming soon, hold tight everyone. And at that point the fight was locked in for the UK. The reason it took four weeks to actually get it confirmed was because Ruiz flat out refused to come here. He said, listen, I've talked up into this is the funny thing. Everyone who's been following my channel, everyone thinks I'm having a laugh. The YB sources told him, yeah? Ruiz dug his foot in and said, I'm not coming to the UK. And that's why it's taken four weeks. How many times has Eddie Hearn said, oh, in 48 hours? Do you think that's by accident? He said that and then it's been another two weeks. No, it's not by accident. Refute. Ruiz has refused to sign to put his con to put his signature on a on the rematch unless it's in somewhere not called the UK. He's shook to come here. <laughs> in the no joy, he's shook. He's shook at getting his chain snatched by the YB and a few man. Yeah? He's shook at getting licked dung by AJ in the UK. AJ already told you. Yeah? He said, listen, you, no, no, no disrespect to no one, but them New York dons, yeah. AJ said when he walked out there. He didn't have the life force. You could see it in his eyes. He didn't have the life force. And he said, when he walks out in the Principality Stadium or Wembley, he has the UK life force coursing through his veins. And Ruiz didn't want none of that. He didn't. Yeah? It's almost like, um... What's that, um... What's that? I'm trying to think of the superhero. Anyway, yeah, it's almost... It's like it's almost like Thor's... It's almost like Thor's... I'm sorry, Thanos' ga gauntlet, man. That's what it's like. Yeah? When he's in New York, the man ain't got no Infinity Stones. When he's in the US, all them 80,000 man put, got, got his gauntlet iced out, yeah? The pink one, the green one, the yellow one, all the ones in there, yeah? My man's gassed on a madness when he's in the UK. Ruiz don't want that one. He's looking for the, the Dole Down and the clone looking motherfucker. That's what he wants. He wants AJ clone. Simple. So don't, in that respect, you have to realise what's gone on here. And I hope... I hope in a way actually AJ and Eddie Hearn actually come out and tell the truth because that's one way they're going to be able to vindicate themselves. And that's why I've been saying all this time when the YB's been breaking exclusive news, I wish they'd have come out and told everyone, listen, rather than because Eddie Hearn kept coming out and saying, oh well, no it's not Ruiz, it's not Ruiz. Meanwhile, Ruiz was in the press saying, I'm not coming to the UK, I'm not coming to the UK. Eddie Hearn and AJ now... Now they've seen the negative response, they need to come out and tell everyone, listen, the reason it's gone to here is because Ruiz didn't dare come here. Get it straight. If you've got a problem, it need, the problem needs to go to Ruiz. Absolutely as simple as that. He's the shook guy who didn't want to come to the UK. And actually, the other thing is, whilst, like I feel, I feel sorry to an extent with the people who won't be able to travel there, and the people who won't be able to take the risk to go to Saudi, it's only one fight. Yeah, Ruiz is getting chopped up like a Christmas turkey. Yeah, look how plump he's looking. He's even said himself in recent interviews, he's been putting weight on. Why do you think that is? Do you think that's by, by pure chance? Absolutely not. He's putting weight on because in life, everyone has a fate. Yeah, and Ruiz's fate is to be chopped up December 7th, Christmas turkey. Do you think, that's another thing as well. People are saying, oh, it's in December. Oh, it's in December 7th. Do you think, do you think AJ and Ern Ern and whatnot Put it in December for shits and gigs. Absolutely not. They put it in December, so that the, so that the turkey that gets licked down on in December seventh can be eaten on Christmas. Yeah, they're chopping up this turkey all year, no doubt. Ruiz is gonna be two hundred. Do you know? Do you know how long a two hundred and sixty-eight pound turkey will last you? All year long, they're gonna be chopping it up and dishing out the proceeds to it all demand them. Yeah, everyone's gonna be eating on December seventh, no doubt. But yeah. To conclude this video, the very bottom line for me is, it's only one fight. People, they'll eventually, they'll get over it. And you got to remember, a career is a long career. And he has given us many fights in the UK, which, to, to the UK fans' credit, you've supported all of them as well. So respect to both of you. But he'll be back, bottom line, he'll be back. Now, if after this next one, 
East, like you got to remember as well. This is it's another great point. The first Ruiz fight was in the US. The second one will be in Saudi. I think there should be a third one. But once AJ beats Ruiz his second time, he will be back in ultimate power again. He'll be able to, because there is no, I don't believe there is a third rematch clause. Meaning, what will happen is, when AJ licks Ruiz down this, this time, yeah, they'll be kind of clear of contract. At which point, it'll, at which point, AJ will have all the power and he'll be able to approach Ruiz under a fresh new contract and say flat out Ruiz. We're going to do a tiebreaker. Because I think that's the best thing to do at this point. Because think about it. Fury and Wilder, they're going to be tied up, licking each other's licking each other's pussies all day and, and fanning around and fighting stiffs all day and fighting 66-year-old men all day. AJ versus Ruiz free. That will be a fight everyone will, will want to see. And that will come to the UK. So whilst everyone's antsy to see this one now, the tiebreaker will be the actually, actually the best one. Because in my opinion, this, this, this last six months, Ruiz has been getting too gassed. I think this one is going to get caught on the slip. He's getting caught lacking on this one, I'm telling you now. I've got good, I've got good information from inside Ruiz's camp. He has been lacking these last two months. He's been on the lack, 100%. He's, getting, he's going to get chopped up easily. First, This is going to be a first three-round job, I'm telling you now. So with that in mind, the third fight will actually be the best one. AJ saving you, man, the best one. The best till last. Because he knows that Ruiz is easy work, this next one. He wants to make sure the UK fans get value for money. He want he wants to one he wants to bring the one to the UK where it's going to be. AJ's up one, Ruiz is up one, and it's a tiebreaker. Simple.